And of course, there is that margin concern, especially when they're going for more discounts to grab more market share. That's right. I think, you know, we were used to intense competition in a booming market. Now we're used to intense competition in a very weak uh, consumer market. Uh, but the problem of being the incumbent, the big, the big incumbent player, Alibaba, is you've got a lot of costs to restructure. You've got to change your, your mindset. That's happening with the, the, the new CEO. But it's, you know, it takes time, as we've seen. It, you know, to move this super tanker around takes a long time. In five years from now, who's going to be number one? Baba, JD.com, or Pinduoduo's Atemu? Or, you know, who knows, right? Te that's the great thing about technology. Five years is a long who time knows, in technology. Right? But it, it, it's likely to be, you know, one of those candidates. But how they embrace new technology, as we've seen with um, Douyin, you know, the, the ByteDance in China uh, equivalent, how live streaming has taken off. Uh, but also, you know, PDD, who would have thought Pinduoduo particularly internationally, would have been so strong. So even in the space of the last two, three years, we've seen major changes. You know, Alibaba is making a, a big bet to stay very relevant, and if not dominant, in the industry, with both commerce and cloud being key focus. Not so much focus in the, in the near term on AI and other stuff that other players are, are making. But if, if Alibaba loses commerce, then what is it, basically? So I think we've seen a, a recommitment to, to stay very relevant in that, in that industry. So, you know, it's going to be a bet that you want to make. Uh, if you're playing that sector, the question is the distribution with the other players. Yeah, and because of this uh, revenue decline at the Taobao Tmall area, uh, there are some questions concerned around uh, Alibaba's ability to basically monetize when it comes to online efforts. I mean, live streaming is so big in China as well. H how did you read those numbers? Yeah, I mean, don't forget, we saw, you know, the, the 618 uh, push, you know, there's all these festivals that happen throughout the year, and Alibaba kind of invented those, really. Uh, but, you know, they're not alone now in pursuing these areas, so they're going to have to find new ways to uh, reassure the merchants that they're the best player, you know, automation. Uh, we're seeing other players, frankly, uh, moving ahead on, you know, self-listing and, and, and cutting out the middle middlemen within the the company that was supposed to cut out the middlemen. <laughs> you know, so, so I think they're under intense competition, I think, by focusing more. Uh, on you know commerce and cloud, uh, and not having so many distract to distractions in other investments. Don't forget they've seen some write-offs over the last few quarters of, of non-core investments. So we see a much more disciplined approach that takes some time to come through. But I think we're beginning to see the the benefits there. But it is a very competitive environment. And the bigger picture, though, is weak consumer demand. It's it's actually pretty tangible. I just came back uh, from from a couple months away uh, from China, and you really feel mm -hmm. it. I mean, the cities look darker and things like that. You know, it's definitely a very muted atmosphere in Beijing and Shanghai. We're looking for that consumer boost that would boost all of these players. In the meantime, we cannot assume that's coming, and it's all about competition. Mm -hmm.